Okay, so obviously I don't want to make this segment all about abortion every single week, but I don't do this segment every single week. So I guess I can make this one all about abortion and not give a shit. So let's start in Indiana, a strategy that is recommended only for moving out of Indiana and highlighting misogyny stories. So you recall back in June of last year when Ohio's six-week abortion ban first went into effect, an abortion doctor named Dr. Caitlin Bahard from Indiana talked publicly about performing an abortion for a 10-year-old rape victim that had to leave her home state to have the operation. And you'll recall Republicans freaking out about this because nothing highlights the cruelty of their policies like the effects of their policies. So they tried to pretend she was lying. And when it became super duper clear that she wasn't, they tried to find another way to punish her. Well, ultimately, they decided to go after her fucking medical license. Last November, Indiana's attorney general filed a complaint against her, alleging that she failed to immediately report the abuse of the child, which is, of course, required by state law, and that she failed to protect her patient's privacy by going public with the story. Now, to be clear, she didn't name the girl. She just said that it happened. And because Republicans were so obsessed with pretending Dr. Bahard was lying, a lot of effort was later made by other people to uncover the specifics around the case. Well, as to the first part, that was just bullshit. She testified that she did report the child's abuse to a social worker, as was her hospital's policy. But after 14 hours of testimony that included the deputy attorney general dismissing her as an abortion activist and calling her unfit to practice, the state medical and licensing board held that she did violate patient privacy and fined her $3,000. She did not lose her license to practice medicine, and the board president was careful to add that he thinks she's a good doctor during the ruling. But the key is that she spoke out against misogynistic laws, so she was punished. The forced birthers will count this as a win, I am sure. But they won't count it out loud or anything. Because ever since Roe versus Wade got overturned against the wishes of the vast majority of the country, suddenly the people who've been screaming about abortion being murdered for the last few decades don't want to talk about it. So, you know, be careful what you wish for, I guess. Of course, we know why they're suddenly so reluctant to talk. As soon as you start talking about the actual results of their victory, you get shit like 10-year-old rape victims having to plan out-of-state trips to get abortions. Or you get stories like Kirsten Hogan's. She's the Texas woman who's suing the state of Texas after she was forced to give birth to her stillborn son. She said of her situation, quote, I was made to feel less than human. Texas law caused me to be detained against my will for five days and treated like a criminal, all during the most traumatic and heartbreaking experience of my life, end quote. She was basically forced to stay in limbo until she either went into labor or her condition worsened enough that the law would allow her to get an abortion. And during that detention, she was told that if she tried to leave, she could be criminally charged with attempting to murder her baby. And if you're tempted to dismiss her case as an extreme, I should probably point out here that it's a class action lawsuit. Anyway, I've got a lot more examples I could give you, but I feel like you're sufficiently depressed for me to hand you back over to Noah, Heath, and Eli.